All right, we're back. So last time we wrote a program uh, about the months. We're going to revisit this today, but before we continue, I would like to uh, go over the solution to the uh, problem of uh, even and odd numbers. Okay, so let's make a new window here and let's ask the user for a number. Let's go num equals and let's go input and we'll say enter a number. Okay, let's put a space there. And um, uh, the other thing which actually I forgot to do here is uh, let's start up uh, screen key. So All right. So at this point, uh, it's not it doesn't have Python highlighting. So let's save this as um, let's call it uh, odd even dot py. As soon as we put the dot py in, we've got uh, some nice highlighting. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed, but my highlighting has changed. And the way that I did that is I went to um, genie.org and also my, my, my background, right? Not only my highlighting is like but like it's it's my my background now is dark. I I prefer a dark background when I program. So I just wanted to show you how I did that. If you go to download in uh, the Genie website and go down to themes and click themes, then there are all these themes you can download. Uh, personally, the one that I chose, you can choose any one you like. You can click on them and see what they look like and decide if you if you like it or not. But the one that I chose is uh, at the very bottom and it's called uh, Vibrant. So that's the one I, I'm using right now. And if you like it, you can simply uh, just right click on the download. If you, if you don't right click, it just shows you the code. And that's not really what, that's not what I want. So I'd, pref I'd rather just right click on it and then go save link as and then there's the conf file that you get and you can just save it and it'll be saved into your downloads. And then once you've saved it in your downloads, you have to copy or move that directory or sorry, that file to a specific location. Now if you're on, if you're on uh, any Unix type of operating system like Mac or Linux in this case like I'm using now you'd put it in this little squiggly thing means your home directory so dot config genie color schemes so if I show you that directory uh, if I get my thing back here if I show you uh, what's in this directory home dot config genie color schemes you'll notice that I have a few files copied there now I'm using the terminal and I know this is going to be very confusing for many of you so let me just kind of uh, minimize that and show it to you with uh, dolphin which is the file manager so if I I can't get to the, my dot config directory here because it is uh, hidden. So I have to go to control and I have to show show hidden files. And once I do that, now I can go to my dot config here. Oops, went too far. And then I can go to uh, genie. 
and then I can go to color schemes and that's where I would that's where I would paste that file okay and now once you paste that file there then I've already done it see it's right there vibrant ink so you move it from your downloads directory into that directory and then once you've done that all you do is you simply go to genie and go up to view and go change color scheme and then you can choose whichever one you want so that was the default one that genie came with notice the color and the background is very different and then there's vibrant which I think I prefer anyways uh, you can do that as well however I know what you're thinking Uh oh what if I have Windows what do I do then because I don't have that those funny directories in Windows no problem because it says for more information detailed configuration instructions click this link so let's do it so when I click that link uh, it takes me to the github page and then it says right there Windows and tada it says if you are Windows 7 or later that's the directory and then of course don't forget the color schemes on the next line so that would be the directory you would copy the .conf file that you downloaded from the themes page on the Genie website. And so then you can have different themes, whatever, whatever one you want. Okay? So that's the setup for Genie. Um, let's go back and let's continue programming here. Um, so at this point, uh, our objective is to determine if it's an odd or even uh, let's just you know let's be good programmers here and put in a comment and say uh, program determines if integer is odd or even okay um, Actually, I shouldn't say enter a number. I should say enter an integer because I don't want a floating point number. The next thing I need to do is this number, I'm going to have to do some math with it. And it's going to be returned by input to be a, uh, a string. So I'm going to want to go num equals int num just to change it. And I could have done that on the line before. And like I said, if you do it on the line before, then you do it like this, but it's a very common mistake, very common, I've mentioned this before, to forget the closing bracket. And that error doesn't show up on line two, it would show up on line three. Okay, But I'm not gonna do that here. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it like this. So now we have the, the integer all right, and we need to determine if it is, in fact, uh, a even or odd number. So we're going to have to use an if statement here. And I'll say if num, and here's, here's the hint I gave you guys last time, which was to use modulus. So I'm now going to modulate, I'm going to go modulo or mod 2. So think about this for a second. If I, what, what is the mod of 2 of an integer? Well, let's say the integer was 10, which is even. How many times does 2 go into 10? Five times. What's the remainder? Zero. So that means I know that it is even. So any time the modulus of 2 equals 0, now I know the number must be even. Print, and then I could say, I'll use an F string here, and I'll say num is even. Done. Um, now, do I need to check if num mod 2 equals 1? Well, not really, because there's no other possibility. Either a number is even or it's odd. There's no third possibility. So I could do this if num mod 2 
equals 1, then it's odd. But it's kind of redundant. So I would probably, in terms of you know, logic, it's probably smarter here just to have an else. Um, actually, let's just run this. Let's 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 run it, and let's. Okay, so let's go 22, and 22 is even. Great. Okay, f5. Uh, what about 11? 11 is odd. All right, looks like it's working okay. Uh, now, let's try it with this, where we just say else. And notice else does not have a condition. Okay. That is now part of the same if block now because it's an if else. So now when we hit F5, enter an integer, 22 is even, F5, 11 is odd. Great. So that was the solution uh, to that problem. So my next um, my next problem for you guys is going to, oops, no, I didn't want to close that. Um, my next problem for you guys is I wanted to go back to the month uh, problem where we determine what season it is by the user entering a uh, three-letter month code. And the one thing which we really have not um, considered for this problem is what if we don't live in, North, in the Northern Hemisphere? What if we're living in the Southern Hemisphere? For example, what if we're living in Australia? Would this be correct? And the answer is, of course, no. So if we go here to the internet, if you're not sure, here is, I've just Googled season, seasons in Australia months, and notice spring are the same months as fall, as our fall in North America, and summer happens to be the same months as winter for us, and autumn is the same as, uh, autumn is another word for fall, it's the same as our spring. And guess what? Winter, therefore, is going to be the same as our uh, summer. Okay? So, what I'd like you to do is I want you to modify this program such that first you ask them are you in the northern hemisphere or in the southern hemisphere? And depending on their answer, then you ask them what month it is, then you have to give them the correct answer. So I'm gonna, you can pause the video now and try and see if you can, so I'll just start it off for you, okay? Uh, we can say, Hemi, so for hemisphere, and we could say input, are you in the northern or southern hemisphere? Okay, and then We'll get them to say uh, north. We'll get them to say north or south. Okay. So that's how. That's what that. Here, I can make this uh, bigger so it can be the whole line can be seen. There. Are you in the northern or southern hemisphere? North, south. Okay. So we're expecting an N or an S. Probably good to use dot upper here, uh, so right. But 
that's, I'll leave that up to you. But now you've got to figure out what to do with this information. Okay, I'll pause the video and um, remember, don't just watch the solution. If you don't try, you're not going to learn. Alright, we're back. And so now, let's go through the solution to this. Uh, so what I would do here is, there's many ways to accomplish this, okay? For example, uh, you could do stuff like right here, and you could say something like, and, by the way, before we do this, let's, um, let's actually fix this. Let's go hemi equals hemi uh, dot upper so that it's uh, north or south. So even if they type in a lowercase n or s, it turns it into an upper one because that's what I asked for here, right? Um, but you could now do and hemi. And by the way, it would have to be and, OK? And if, if you just wanted to kind of go like this and then go like that, now that whole thing, all the months, are a separate true-false uh, result. And then you could say and hemi equals uh, north. Uh, and by the way, that would have to be a string. So now that's correct. All right? Then, of course, we have to copy this whole thing. Control C. Uh oh. No. And then come down here and then say something like, and now if Hemi was south, and then we would change this to uh, summer. But honestly, like, Personally, I wouldn't do it this way because um, it, now the, why am I showing this to you? Because I want you to see different ways of doing the same thing. I'm not going to do it for all of them, but you get the idea here. Uh, specifically, I want you to be cognizant of the and key of the and word here because, in other words, I'm I have to determine the month. But then I have to determine the, I can't say or there, right? Because then the month doesn't matter at all. However, um, uh, obviously this program isn't finished. But I'm not going to do it this way. Because now for, for every, I have to have two for every one. So I have to have um, two for the same month, right? And then I have to have two for the next one, two for the next one, and so on and so forth. Not to say that this is an invalid solution. It's fine. It's just not the one I think I would choose. Um, so what would I do? Um, so I'm going to get rid of this here. And I noticed that some people did it like this. They simply copied all this, and they went. You went Control C, and then they went uh, Control V, and now they said, "If." Oh, sorry. Then they went if Hemi equals North. Oops. Okay. Now they would go like this. And then they would go like that, hit a tab, select it all, and then hit tab. Um, and then obviously you could say something like elif. What the reason? Part of the reason why I am uh, showing you this is because I really want you to pay attention to the indentation. Okay. So now I'm going to notice I'm not saying else here, and I'll show you why. And I'm going to say s, 
And then I'm going to now I have to scroll down. Okay, I'll give it some space here. Actually, let's go all the way to the bottom so we can, we're not uh, coding on top of our key output. And now I'm going to select all this, shift, arrow down, and I'll hit tab here. So basically now, uh, I have to change a few things though. Notice I copy pasted all this code above. So I didn't have to retype it, which was good. Okay, uh, but this is now wrong. So this now has to be changed. And I can go control, notice I'll go control shift arrow over and then I'll make this summer. Okay, uh, control shift that way, I'll make this fall. And then I'll go over here, control shift back arrow, uh, I'll make this winter, and then I'll make this uh, control shift back, and I'll ca I'll call this uh, spring. Okay. Now, here comes my else. Okay. So let's just there you go. So you can see what I'm doing, and my else now is going to be print invalid. Hemisphere. Okay. So, in other words, they didn't type in north or south. So, notice how my indentation works here, okay? So, I've got if north, and we've got um, my, my regular solution that I had before. Then I just copy, I copied all this simply by going, right? And I've indented it too, okay? But I copied all this, and you can indent all at once, right? If you want to know how to indent all at once, really easy, right? You just go shift, arrow down, select everything you want to indent, go tab, and it goes in. If you want to unindent, shift, tab, shift, tab, depending on how many times. This is wrong because I want it to be indented here. And so that's correct. Notice this is now called an a nested uh, if statement. So I have an if statement within an if statement. Okay, and here's my elif. Hemisphere is south. Notice now the the seasons are changed, right? For for like on this line 22, I've got December, January, and February is now summer. So I think this is pretty clear. Let's run it F5, and let's see. Uh, I'm in the north. All right. Enter the month. Uh, February. Winter, good. Okay, hit it again. F5, let's try it again. I'm in the south. Enter the, let's try February again. This time it says summer. That's right. Okay? So uh, let's try it one more time. This time for the hemisphere, let me put, let me put uh, U for the upper hemisphere. And it says, uh-oh, enter the three month. Now, this is interesting. Okay, so I have an error here. Uh, invalid hemisphere. So, in other words, I'm still asking the month even though that's invalid. How can I fix this? How can I fix this? Yeah, I think this, hopefully you guys see the solution to this. And that is, I have to move this question Right, because even though the hemisphere is invalid, I'm still asking this question on the next line. So I'm going to go shift, grab this, control X to cut it, and now I'm going to paste it once here. And of course, I have to make sure that the indentation is correct. And now I have to do it twice because I also have to put it here. Control V for paste. And I can um, select it all and tab it over because it's got to be indented properly. So now if I run it, F5, and I'll s type in some wrong value, it says invalid hemisphere. It's not even going to ask me for the month. Okay, because I've got the question inside. But I did have to copy it twice. I'm not asking it once. And of course, if I do put a valid hemisphere in, then it will ask me for the, the month. Okay? And so that's working well. June in the south is winter. However, OK, 
Okay, so what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to now, I'm not finished with this because what I'd like to do is I'd like to, sometimes we want to have two different solutions, but this is a valid solution. So I don't really want to lose it. So I'm simply going to come up here to file and I'm now going to go save as. And so now I'm going to call this month two. Okay, and I'm going to hit enter. Now I've so notice this is now called month two. Now the reason for this is because I don't want to lose my original solution, which works. But I'm going to do this in a different way, and I want you to see how I'm going to change this code. So um, I'm going to. Uh, get rid of this for now. I'm going to unindent this stuff. Shift tab. And I'm going to come down here and delete this. Okay, let's delete all this stuff. All right. So this was my original solution. We're back to my original one where we don't really have uh, any notion of north and south. However, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, have an if statement here and say if hemi equals North or Hemi equals uh, South, then I'm good. Then I want to do what's in here. So now I want to select all that and tab it over. And now down here, I'm going to have my else. In other words, now. Uh, I'm going to say invalid. Oops, I just want to. I want you to see what I'm typing here. Uh, I'm going to say um, invalid hemisphere. Okay, so and then and then the program ends. In other words, if they don't type in an N or an S for north or south, it's it's game over. So now, how would I do it? How would I put the answer? How would I change things here? Well, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to say if if month, now at this point they've typed in the month here after their, if it's either north or south, then I'm going to say if month is December, January, February. Now after this point I'm going to say if hemi equals north, Now I'll tab this over, and then I'm going to say else, because it can't be anything other than, because just think about this. The only way we get to this point in the code is if it's north or south here. And we're testing to see if it's north here, and therefore, and now I'm going to, I'm not going to type this out again because I'm lazy. I'm going to go control C, and then we'll go tab, control V. But this now is not going to say winter, it's going to say summer. And so um, I'm going to do this for the for the rest of them as well. So ready? So I got I've got to type this in here. So I'll just I can just simply um, go like this. Select it all, control C and then just change the control V. I can get rid of this. And then go here, control V, and then get rid of this, control V. Now, now I have to go and change the, uh, the seasons. So the first one is correct. It's winter for north, summer for south. This is wrong. 
March. So uh, notice I hit. Notice what I hit to change stuff, right? This is instead of going backspace, backspace. So I just select the word, and then um, March, April, May is spring, but here it is fall. Okay, and and June, July, August is in the north is summer but here it is in the um, in the southern hemisphere it's winter and the last one October November December is fall and in the south it's spring so just to double check these September, October, November, fall, yep, in the north, spring in the south, yes. And June, July, August, summer in the north, and winter, yep, that looks right. March, April, May, spring in the north, and fall in the south, yes. Okay, so all looks good. And if you, you know, if you want to see more of the code, uh, I can actually get rid of these buttons, which I'm not really using. Uh, show toolbar. There, now you can see a bit more of my code. And in addition, I can actually get rid of that thing at the bottom too. So message window. There, and then I can also go control minus. Uh, maybe a little bit. That's maybe a bit too much. Of course, yeah. So that's pretty good. You can see uh, m most of my code there. I guess I don't need that empty space. And that's kind of a nice one to see, but that's pretty much it. And so now let's run this F5. That'll save it automatically. Are you in the south or north? Let's say, well, let's just try north first. Um, enter the month. Let's try September. Season is fall. Good. Let's try it again. Uh, I'm in the n north. Season is January. Yep, that's winter. Excellent. Now let's try the south. I'm in the south. January. Summer. Good. Okay, let's try it again. Summer. September. Or sorry, not summer. South. September is spring. Perfect. So this solution works. So now we have, well, I, didn't, I haven't tried all of them, but I'm pretty sure this works. And of course, if we try the error codes again, if I invalid hemisphere, perfect, that works as well. And just to boot, um, we can try an invalid month too. Uh, JJJ, sorry, that is not a three letter month and the program is over. So uh, depending on which one you guys prefer, right, uh, let's kind of put the two solutions beside each other. Let's go, um, let's see, can I open, I, I don't think I can open it again, but um, let me just open the other one, then we can maybe flip beside them. Um, where was month? There it is. Okay, so let's kind of make, make this one a little bit smaller as well. Maybe that's too small. I'm not sure. Maybe that's good. So here is month, and here is month two. There's month. So there's month. There's the first one we did where we copy pasted the whole block and then uh, changed the stuff there. And then the second way we did it was by. Um, deciding on the season inside there. Notice the one thing that was really different here is in this one, all I'm checking for if it's north or south, and then I'm deciding on the month, then I decide what I print based on the hemisphere. Whereas in the first solution, we don't check if it's north or south, we just check if it's north, and then do appropriate code, check if it's south, and then do appropriate code, and then here's my else. This, these two programs are 
excellent, I can't stress that enough, in teaching you how to indent and create nested if ladders. Okay? This will be the last example we do on this. If you ever are unsure of how to do nested if statements, come back to this example and uh, review it. Okay? Um, we're now going to move on to uh, something else, which is, uh, let's go back to our textbook. Um, I'll put these, I'll put these, uh, these codes up uh, so that you guys can, can see them, because I think this is probably the pinnacle of what we've learned so far in terms of if ladders. Um, now, not to say that we, you know, someone couldn't make this better or there, there's another way of doing this. There's always another way of doing it. But at least you have two solutions to look at and dissect the logic, dissect the code, and digest it, absorb it, okay? Understand how both of them are working. So I would re definitely recommend you review through this and I'll have it up on my uh, website, arcolition.com, CS1. So, once again, if you're not sure where that is, uh, there it is. So, uh, I'll have this under control flow under the if ladder, so we'll, we'll continue this down here, uh, and I'll, I'll have it up later. Okay. Um, now, let's, let's go back to the textbook. And our next step today, okay, so your textbook should also be on your, on your desktop. You can double click it. And um, the next thing that comes after if statements or if ladders, gosh, maybe this might be faster if I just go to the table of contents and go to control flow. Okay, so after if statements is um, the while statement. So I'd like you to I'd like you to read this section on the while, and um, I, I want you to be careful of because sometimes once people see this type of code, they end up uh, end up feeling like that's the only way to do things. So have a read through this section. It's very short. It's like don't go to the, stop here. Don't go to the for loop. We're just going to do while loops first. Okay, and then um, we'll continue after that, after you read this section. Okay? See you in a bit.